welcome to an all-new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Joseph Bianchini. On Tuesday, Eye of the Tiger reported on that evening's board meeting where they would vote on the future schedule of the district schools. The proposed AB rotating model failed with a vote of 2 to 3. This model would have transitioned students from a full 5-day model with 70-minute periods to rotating an A group and B group into classrooms throughout the week with each class being 70 minutes. The board also voted on having a district-wide survey sent out to parents to have them decide if their students would be returning to campus or going into distance learning until March 12th. The numbers results will determine whether or not each site will have to go to hybrid. If enough students choose to do distance learning, that would allow classrooms to maintain four feet of space between each chair. That school can continue five days a week. Any school that cannot maintain that space would go to a hybrid so that it can comply with new state mandates. The vote passed four to one. The board mentioned that these votes would most likely change by March 13th if the state adjusted the mandates again. Now we go over to Kobe Estrada with sports. Good morning and welcome to this Friday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Kobe Estrada. In last Friday's broadcast, we mentioned the commitment of Annie Lemos. We go to Chad Miller with more on the story. Senior Annie Lemos made a decision of a lifetime that she'll be continuing her education at Portland State University as well as a softball journey. I chose Portland State because of the high level of competition within the softball program and also the location being not too far from home and it also gives me an opportunity to play at home a couple times which is super cool and I also chose it for the high level of academics within my major so and I've also met a lot of people from there and everyone's been super cool. So it just felt like a really good fit for me. And honestly, this is just a huge feeling of relief and accomplishment. And it feels like a lot of my hard work has paid off and it's just getting me super excited for college and just the next step in my athletic career. And anyway, most of this time, more mature and thinks she will have a very bright future at the next level. I'm super excited and proud of Annie for committing to Portland State. It is definitely well-deserved. We've been playing with each other since we were four, so I know all the hard work that she's put in has finally paid off on and off the field. And I'm very proud of her, and I can't wait to see all the big things she does in her future. Most of parents are very proud of what she has done on the field and in the classroom. Um, she's worked very hard from the time that she was five until today. Um, I've had the opportunity to be her mom as well as her catcher and coach, and I couldn't be more proud of all that she's done on the field and uh, in the classroom. So, really excited for Annie. I just it's been really a cool experience to watch Annie go through all the different levels of softball during her career, and, and she's you know she's always been a superstar all the way through, and, and we look really forward to her being a, a really great player at Portland State. And can't for you know can't wait to watch her uh, play there. Go Vikings! Go Vikings! And in other sports news, the CIF released a new sports schedule and eliminated the section playoffs. For a full breakdown on the CIF's release, tune into next Tuesday's edition of EOTSN. And that's all in your home for Roseville High School sports, top place breakdowns, and more. I, the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Kobe. Welcome to this Friday's entertainment news. I'm Isabella Foley. With 2021 finally here, this means we get tons of new content coming to streaming services. And recently, a new show was announced and debuted on January 3rd on Fox called The Great North. The writers of popular animated series Bob's Burgers are branching out with their latest animated series set in Alaska. It stars Nick Offerman as Beef Tobin, a single dad of four who was left by his wife. Beef's whole goal is to keep his children close to home in the family fishing business. However, his daughter Judy has more glamorous dreams of working at the local mall instead. Unfortunately, the show doesn't hold up to the high hopes I had set for it. Bob's Burgers is a very successful and at this point well-known show. It has great jokes and the characters have a great natural chemistry. While the idea of a kooky Alaskan family sounds promising, it just doesn't make the mark. Unlike Bob's, there seems to be little to no jokes and I get the sense that Will Forte, who plays Beef Tobin's oldest son, is just trying too hard. It's super disappointing considering it comes from the creators of such an enjoyable and successful show. But if you're more interested in storyline rather than jokes, you can watch the first two episodes on YouTube TV or Hulu if you're subscribed, or you can watch it on Fox now for free. And in other entertainment news, the all new Sims 4 Paranormal Stuff Pack came out on Tuesday the 26th and it is an awesome addition to the game. It has new furniture, customizable items such as hair and clothing, and you can even become a medium. You can buy it for $9.99 across all platforms if you're interested. 
For my full reviews on The Great North and The Sims 4 Paranormal Stuff Pack, visit iThetigerNews.com. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Isabella. In May of 2019, I the Tiger interviewed junior Ivan Kowalczyk about his chocolate sculpting hobby. Now we go to Lucas Gilworth as we follow up on the story. Junior Ivan Kowalczyk, now with over 30 sculptures, is still creating the chocolate crafts for friends and family. After two and a half years of practice, Ivan believes his artwork has improved. Since I started, I think I got a lot better with being more detail-oriented and just having spending more time on making my sculptures more accurate. Although his work is improved, Yvonne has no plans to sell his chocolate in the future. So my main idea was just to like make those as gifts for people. So I only sold maybe two or three of them just to people who really wanted to or ordered something specific. So all the rest of them are just gifts for people. Yvonne's friend, Junior Jake Floyd, was one who received one of the sculptures from Yvonne. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think he started probably maybe a couple months before my birthday um, because I know it took him quite a while to finish that sculpture because it was like really detailed. So I had a picture of me standing on one of the rocks, one of the big rocks at Folsom Lake, and um, he had a picture of that and then he did like a sculpture of me standing on that rock. Floyd believes that Yvonne has refined his skills since he started. I think he's gone a lot more like um, in depth. I remember um, at one point we were doing this thing for band and he had like done like a little sculpture, um, kind of like it was a picture frame and he had done one for like each person and written their name on it. And that was like really awesome. But to see him now and he's doing like a full sculpture and he's turning it into like a 2D picture into like a 3D sculpture and like the amount of detail that he had to put into that um, to still make it like look good and look like kind of realistic with like my face and like the me standing on the rock. I think he's definitely gotten a lot more like um, detailed and into like more complex sculpting. Ivan plans to continue crafting his chocolate sculpting for his friends and family in the future. That's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on at eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.